Hey friends, back in the mid 90s, I had this gig in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, opening up for Molly Hatchet at some little theater. Um, I don't remember the name of it. It was about a thousand capacity theater. Maybe some of you from Alabama know which one I'm talking about. I didn't know much about Molly Hatchet other than the hits. You know, I was never a big Southern rock guy, but I would get these gigs sometimes where when a classic rock band would be traveling through, I'd be the person that would get called sometimes in the Midwest and uh, get to open those gigs, which was great because uh, the audiences were always really appreciative and it went down well. So I was happy to do this one in, in Alabama, in Tuscaloosa. But I, like I said, I would hear Flirting with Disaster come on the radio. I'm a simple man. I hear Flirting, disaster, flirting with Disaster come on the radio and I turn that sucker up. You know, that's kind of how I always felt about Molly Hatchet. So I, we show up at the gig. We pull into town. I don't remember where we came from and where we were going. But we pull into town on fumes. We didn't have any money. We're trying our best to, you know, just make enough money at that gig to move on to the next gig. So we show up and we load in. And I remember we did our sound check. And the guys from Molly Hatchet really weren't talking to us. They weren't saying much at all kind of being standoffish and that's completely cool because when you're the opening band it's not your gig your job is to be on time get out of the way and don't make any kind of a stink at all and always take it pride in that so we're just being quiet and doing our thing it's their gig you know we're just there to to warm it up so we play our set we go out and it went great the audience loved us it was really fun we had a good time and uh, we did the best that we could and had a, had a blast. Came backstage, and we sat down. It was a very small backstage area, and I remember the guys in Molly Hatchet, like we're sitting down, and they're all kind of like standing up, getting fired up for their gig. They're trying to get good and fired up for get, going out to play. And they start doing these kung fu type moves, like Elvis moves and all these poses. And we're thinking, okay, they're just having fun. They're teasing us. I remember we're looking at each other, you know, across the room through the bodies of Molly Hatchet guys. It was a little bit weird because they were older guys. We thought that they were old, but the truth is they were probably younger than I am now. And uh, we were in our mid-20s, and they just looked like a bunch of tough old biker guys. And, man, they started getting amped up, like really amped up. And they start hitting each other on their shoulders like football players do when they're hitting in the pads. They're like, we're going to rock tonight, aren't we? We're going to rock them. You know, and they're yelling back at each other, staring at each other. That's right, man. We're going to rock Tuscaloosa. Woo! All that stuff. And we're just kind of looking. You know, and like they look at us like, what are you looking at? And at that moment, I'm thinking, oh, my God. Molly Hatchet is going to kick our ass. I honestly did not know whether they were legitimately mad or just getting themselves hyped up or whatever, but we didn't want to say anything and cross them at all. So they go ahead, and they go out on stage and play, and I think, well, man, I want to go check some of this out. I want to go see it. So I walk out to the back of the theater and standing behind the crowd, kind of watching from the back of the room, and the audience absolutely loved them. I mean, think about it. This is a first wave southern rock band in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And, you know, and they're just completely throwing down. I'm sitting there thinking, these, their guitars sound great. I mean, really, really great guitar sounds. And I'm thinking, man, they could play their asses off. You know, they're really, really great players, all the guys. And they had their thing, and they did it. And the audience was all in. It was kind of borderline religious experience to the audience. And I'm like, man, they were really connected to them, and there was this thing going on, and that's really all you can ask for from a band. I thought, man, that's, that's pretty all right. These guys threw down tonight. So after the gig, we're kind of standing around backstage, and they're still being a little bit weird, but they're coming down a little bit. And the lead singer, I think it was Danny Joe Brown. I think that he came in and out of the band a couple times. I don't know my Molly Hatchet history, so I'm not really the person to, to tell this, but some of you can teach me in the comments. Danny Joe Brown, he's like talking to me, and uh, I'm thinking, man, is he still going to give me that hard guy trip or whatever? He's coming down a little bit. He puts his arm around the guitar player. He's like, you see this guy? 
And I'm like, yeah, I said, this guy right here, and he's hitting him on the chest. My man right here, this is the guy that wrote Play That Funky Music, White Boy. And I'm thinking, no way. <laughs> I said, that's great, man, really? You know, and he's like, that's right. I said, were you in Wild Cherry? And he's, yeah, man. And I'm just thinking, there's no way. I later looked into it, and it was true. But at the time, I didn't know. I'm like, man, is he messing with me? Is, are they still going to go off? So as we talked for a little while, and they finally come down a little bit, and are just really being cool guys. And the singer, I believe it was Danny Joe Brown, said, hey, man, where are you guys staying at? And I said, well, we're kind of, you know, I, I, I didn't tell him the truth. I didn't want to admit that we didn't have any money. You know, we barely made enough, so we were just going to scrape together what merch money we made that night and probably the $100, put the $100 in the gas tank to get to the next town that we probably made for playing the gig. Whatever merch money, you know, we'd try to get a hotel room and maybe the four of us would sleep in it. And um, he's like, man, where are you staying at? And I'm like, well, we haven't worked it out yet. We haven't really figured that out. And uh, he's like, i tell you what, man. They gave us six hotel rooms for this gig, and we're driving on to Florida tonight. Why don't you guys take those hotel rooms? And I said, man, we can't do that. That's really, really nice of you and generous, but we can't do that. And uh, he's like, no, man, uh, you know, we. I remember what it was like. You know, I remember what it was like, and uh, we want to help uh, young bands whenever we can. And uh, so we take them as a personal favor to me. I believe it was Danny Joe Brown. You know, it's a personal favor to me. Take these rooms. And uh, I said, man, that's really nice. And um, it was in a really nice hotel. We went, like, we hung out a little bit, not too much. We went and we crashed in the hotel. And it was the first time, I'm 99% sure it's the first time I ever had my own hotel room on a tour. And uh, it's a really nice one, way nicer than the places that I'm used to sleeping in. And um, it's all because... The guys in Molly Hatchet were cool guys, and they hooked us up. And I'm very glad that they did not kick our ass. But what's your favorite Molly Hatchet song? Did you ever get to see them live? Tell me about it. I want to hear about it in the comments. And subscribe to this channel, like the video, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.